call now to resume. Bay that your... tourists love to visit. That tourist spot is gone now, and a new city is in its place. But Darwin tells us there's one man who doesn't want us to forget the way it used to be in Spanish Fort. The Mobile Bay Causeway. After the I-10 Bayway was constructed, this land bridge was and often is generally bypassed by today's commuters and interstate travelers. But there was a time when the causeway was the way across the bay. And on top of the hill on the eastern shore was a quiet little place called Spanish Fort. Uh, the people's what makes the history of any community. And therefore, that's why I want to focus uh, primarily on the early residents that were here, the early businesses, and the people that founded this community and made it what it is today. Local book and antique dealer turned historian Charles Phillips lives in Spanish Fort and is in the process of documenting the town's last 100 years. He's writing a book he'll call The History of Spanish Fort and its Mobile Bay Causeway. The tale takes us back to the mid-1920s when a man named George Fuller moved from Chicago to invest in a golf course on land known as Spanish Fort. Well, in 1929, the stock market crashed, and when that happened, uh, so did the golf course. Charles says Fuller wound up with most of the land and then decided this spot at the top of the bay would be a perfect place for a tourist village and cabins, which he opened in 1935. Fifteen years later, George Fuller would expand his growing tourist business to a spot across the street, which is Highway 98, by building a motel complete with a large swimming pool. Uh, many of us kids that lived here in the neighborhood would swim in that pool thanks to George Fuller Sr. He would allow us to go and swim there during the summertime. As is usually the case, unfortunately, almost all of the old Spanish fort that Charles has collected in his photographs is gone. It's been torn down, replaced by a shopping center or something. With the exception of one very familiar building. You've seen it before. That round building at the intersections of 90 and Highway 31. That was the old Spanish Fort restaurant. It was built probably around 1959, and uh, we even had a lot of famous people that ate there. But things change. Spanish Fort became a city in 1992, and this was its first city hall. It's now a bank. And because things change, Charles wants to make sure that there will be a record of what was. He's had some help. The town's role in the Civil War is well documented. It is the recent past that Charles is trying to preserve before there was a bayway or an interstate and Spanish Fort was the way to go. In Spanish Fort, here's Darwin, NBC 15 News. Now, Charles Phillips says he'd like to find more photographs of Spanish Fort between 1900 and the 1960s. If you can help, call him at 490-9892. By the way, he says he can get your photos back to you the very same day. That's a big project, but an interesting one. Don't you love listening to those pictures? I'm listening to the music, <laughs> looking at the pictures, and listening to that great music. Yes, to all of the above. All right, we'll take a break and get back. Right